Cool. Okay, so the last part, part three, is the using the change of base formula and other properties of logs. The change in base formula I like to call Cobb. Because that just sounds good. Co a good corn in the cob always sounds good. So if I can relate any of math with food, I am happier. So the change of base formula, otherwise known as Cobb. You will need a calculator. Notice that they want you to round your answer to three decimal places. So not only will you have to learn to use logs on your calculator, you will also know how, learn how to um, round your answer. So what you will need is either a graphing calculator, which is recommended if you're going on to transfer level math, or you can have a scientific calculator as preferred in the syllabus. But a scientific calculator or a graphing calculator, how you know that it's the right calculator for you is if it has logs on it, and notice the log here is um, right next to the 7 button, right? And natural log, the log base E, can you imagine your, your calculator knows what log base E is? And those, that's how you know whether or not you have a good calculator for your exams because you have log and natural log. And those are what we'll need for this section. Let me clear that out. Okay, so the change of base formula, the idea behind it is basically back in the day, calculators were coming out. They could not program the calculator to have anything but base 10. So notice here with the change of base formula, we have log M and log A. Notice there's no base like we've been writing for the past few examples, right? There's log base A of M, and all of a sudden it goes to log M. So there's no base here, there's a missing base. This is what we call a common logarithm. And a common logarithm is when you have log of base 10 of some value, call it X. That's all. So when we have a common logarithm with a base 10, we don't write base 10. We just write log x. Because we assume in our head we know it's there. We don't always have to write it. We know that that's supposed to be a 10 in there. So the change of base formula was created so that we could put these values of logs into ca in the calculators and change them into the base 10 or natural log because those are the two logs in our calculator. This log is a base 10. Notice there's no base there, so it's a base 10. And natural log. And that's all they're made for. They're just made for the calculator. They said if you have some log, like in our first example, base 3, we can't put that in our calculator. Right, we just have a log of base 10 or a natural log. So they said, okay, let's rewrite it so it has a base 10 or a natural log. And that way students can always, we can plug and check in the computer or calculator and get an approximation for our log. Now, the real question is, which one do I use? Log, base, the common log or the natural log? Common log, natural log. Right, common, natural. The answer is, who cares? They both get the same result no matter what. If you, you want to do log or natural log, it's up to you. you. The result is the same. So for the first example, log base 3 of 32, we can't put this in the calculator, but we can use Cobb, the change of base formula, to be able to. So notice that the base of A goes on the bottom, right? A is the base, which is usually on the bottom. That log of that value goes on the bottom. Same over here. Right? The value M is in the numerator. Okay, so this will be log of 32 over log of 3. And if you don't like log, I'm a big Euler fan, so I'd rather use natural log. We could definitely do natural log of 32 over natural log of 3. The results are exactly the same. 
So I'm going to put log 32 over log 3. Let me clear this out. So log 32, close the parenthesis, then divide by log of 3. Right, so this looks exactly the way it should look. Hit enter. Now some of you may have used natural log. Perfectly okay. Notice you have natural log of 32. Close the parenthesis. Hit the division sign. Natural log of 3. Hit enter. Same exact number. All right, so we'll approximate to three decimal places, I think, three. So I'll do 3.155. Notice the num here's the third decimal place is at the four. Notice the number here is above five, so I have to up the four by one. So it'll be 3.155. So 3.155 and 3.155. I just did both so you could see that using the natural log or the common logarithm is exactly the same. So quickly doing this bottom one, we have log of base square root of two of the square root of seven. Now that looks crazy. That's because it is crazy, but it's okay. We're all sane people and we can go ahead and use the cob to approximate this to three decimal places. So we'll have the log of the value square root of 7 over the log square root of 2. And again, you could do the same thing with natural logs, right? You could have natural log of square root of 7 over natural log square root of 2. Okay, so go over to your calculator. Go ahead and hit log of square root, and my square root button is right there. It's in blue, so I have to hit second at the square button. Okay, log of 7. Close the parenthesis, divided by log square root of 2 close the parenthesis and hit enter. Okay, so this is for both. So uh, again, round to three decimal places. So it'll be 2.807. Notice the num there's the third decimal place is the seven. Notice the number next to it is three, which is less than five. So we can leave seven to be seven. So it'll be 2.807. I'll do the same over here. Okay, now that we've had everything we need, we have the three properties, we have the change of base formula, we know how to expand and contract logs. The last part is just, just other properties, other properties that are very simple, very quick, to evaluate. For example, notice you have log base a of 1 equals 0. So remember, logs are exponents. So log base a of 1 equals 0, remember that's just saying that the base a of the exponent 0 is equal to 1, which makes sense. Anything to the 0 power is 1. This one down here makes total sense, even though it looks weird. A to the log base A of M, that log is an exponent that looks weird. But if you think about it, remember the logs are equal to exponents. So this is like log of the base A of the value M is equal to the exponent log base A of M. Totally makes sense. So if you have A to log and with the same base a notice the base on the log is the same as the base on the term well notice it's just the value the third property is obvious log base a of a equal to one well of course because if you have the base a 
to the exponent 1, isn't that just the value a? That makes total sense. Very quick evaluations of logs that you should know and memorize. That way it expedites your work. Log base a, a to the r equal to r. This makes sense. If we write it, if we rewrite log base a, a to the r equal to r in exponential form, it just says that a, the base a to the exponent r is the value a to the r. Makes sense. But notice that these are going to be quick evaluations for your logs because if you have log of base a of the value in which is the same base, it's just the exponent itself. So easy. So looking at part A as the first example, log base 5 of 1, you don't even have to look at the base here. If you have log base of anything of 1, that is automatically looking at the properties 0. Notice log of 10. We don't see a base, but we know this base. When we don't see a base there, we know it's the common logarithm. So this is like log base 10 of 10. We'll look at your second property over here. If you have log of base a of the same value a, that's equal to 1. Notice we have log base 10 of 10, which is the same form as log base a of a, automatically 1. These are like two second problems. If I have log of 10 to the negative 4, once again I have the common logarithm because I don't see a base there. And I know this is log base 10 of 10 to the negative 4. This should remind you, if you go up to your box, of this last property. If I have log base a of the same value a to an exponent, notice that that's just the exponent r. Notice my base matches the base here, log base 10 of 10 to the negative 4. Well, that's just the exponent negative 4. Easy, fast evaluations of logs. So let's look at d. I have base 12 base of 12 to the exponent log base 12 of the square root of 12. That is way too many 12s for me. But, you know, just looking at it closer, I don't get intimidated. I go back up to my little box, and I notice it looks like this third property. I have a base 12 to an exponent of log, and the base on the log is 12 also. So this looks something like this one over here. So what this means is, is that if I have um, a value 12 to an exponent with a log with that same value, then it's just going to be whatever the value the log is attached to, right? So a to the log base a of m, in our case it's 12, log base 12 of square root of 12, notice it's just going to be the value. So notice that 12 to the log base 12, these two match. So, so it's just going to be the square root of 12.